Hey everybody, this is Captain Yeet here for you for another Sea Run the Princess of Power episode review. This is going to be Sea Run the Princess of Power season 4, episode 3, titled Flood Arena. So, let's get into it. So, this episode starts off with Catra. She is asleep and she's having a nightmare. And her nightmare is about, well, what she did like a couple episodes ago, opening up the portal, even though everybody told her not to. And Trapta tried to warn her and she starts to run away to go tell Hordak. She zaps her with like the taser gun thing that the Horde has and it sends her off to Beast Island. And, and Trapta goes, what did you do to me? She wakes up screaming, you know, huffing and puffing, sweating like, oh my goodness. And Emily, the robot that Trapta made is right next to her. Captain freaks out and scratches her and Emily runs away. And so she's still huffing and puffing. And then we get the opening. After the opening, we cut over to Hordak working on some bots and he finds a piece of technology that looks like Entrapta's. And he sees and see and he says her name. And what's really funny is this little like imp son demon thing starts to repeat what he says like Entrapta, Entrapta. And he gets mad and throws the little like piece of technology at her. I mean, not at her, at him. <laughs> then Catra walks in and starts to taunt Hordak about the, um, well, he just did a squad of bots on this town called Belderon. And Bo, remember, he made, like, a surge device when he captured the other bot to, like, figure out how the other bots worked. So he took out, like, a, basically a whole squad of the bots in an instant. So Hordak's trying to, um, well, fix them up. And it was kind of, based on what we know, like, in the next few scenes, it was really interesting. So he brings up Entrapta. Because, you know, in his mind, Entrapta betrayed them on Back to the Princesses. So he's thinking, oh, only Entrapta could make an advice like this. So obviously the technology is upgrading because Entrapta went back to them. And Catra looks kind of like nervous, like, you know, oh, snap, he's bringing up Entrapta because, you know, she betrayed Hordak and sent her off to Beast Island without telling anybody besides from, well, I guess Scorpion knows and the Goat Lady knows. Besides them two, nobody else knows. So anyway, so he starts taunting Hordak about Horde Prime coming, so he needs to hurry up and start winning and stuff. And all he's doing is he's flicking up and down the piece of technology that Entrapta made. I just really like how Hordak, he just caught it without even looking. And he's like, you know, hey man, like, <laughs> you keep talking this junk, I'm not really appreciating it. He didn't say that specifically, but you know, he's like stepping up the counter and look. And he's like back down, talking to me like that. Eventually, he gets really scared and backs up, and we hear clapping off to the side. Hordak turns to the side, and it's Catra. It's revealed that, yeah, the character he's been talking to is Double Trouble. And Double Trouble says he wants to get into character about everybody she turns into so she can trick people. That makes sense. But the fact that she looked very nervous and scared, even though she's playing a role. What I wasn't even looking at her when she said, when he brought up uh, Entrapta. That was interesting. Obviously, they have to do that so we know it's Catra. You get what I'm saying? Like, because if she didn't do that, we'll probably figure out, oh, that's Double Trouble. But at the same time, I just like how she did that. Then it also brings up, I guess, Catra told her, hey, whenever whenever somebody brings up Entrapta, look nervous, because I because I turned off a Beast Island. <laughs> like, that doesn't make any sense, but, you know, it made sense for that. For that. Anyway, she turns back into Double Trouble, and Catra introduces her to Hordak, like our newest member of the Horde. I didn't mention this last episode, but whenever Double Trouble shapeshifts into somebody, she gets, like, a black... Uh, see, like, her whole body turns black with green little dots, and it's a really cool sound effect. And then she transforms into well, anybody. You see? That looks really cool. That's a, that's a really cool way to transform into people. I really like that effect. And she's really scared and nervous of Hordak. She backs up real quick after introducing herself. She's really intimidated by her. Anyway, Catra has an idea on how to take back Balduron. Because we certainly just take it back fully, like throw a bot inside it. We should probably use it. Because it, it could gain us something. Hordak's like, okay, so what do you have in mind? Then we cut over to Bright Moon. Well, we cut over to Bright Moon because Glim is there talking to, um, I was going to say the Horde, talking to Bo on a trucker pad. But we cut back over to Bo. And, well, okay, we cut over to Bo on a door and Swift Point talking through the tracker pad. Cause they're at Belderon because they just rescued it. Because what, what I just said, he took out a whole platoon with an instant with some sort of surge device. So they're talking to Glimmer that's in Bright Moon through the tracker pad. It was really funny, this one little moment. Because Bo has a little piece of technology that looks like Entrapta's. And through the tracker pad, they're telling Glimmer about the whole battle they just had. Like, Bo was like, you know, I was shooting my arrows. I took out like three at once. A door, she made a spear and stabbed it like a sish kebab. And started beating other bots with it. And then Sporkman would come in. And I kicked some of them. I mean, yeah, yeah, he did that too. And then, and then Bo, he saw another arrow and then sent some bots off the cliff. And then Sporkman, and I kicked some of them. Like, 
good job, man. <laughs> he just keeps bringing, I, I, and, I, and I kick some, man. That's so, that's so cool. Anyway, Glimmer, she's like obviously congratulating them. But at the same time, she feels kind of sad because she's stuck in Bright Moon doing queen duties. She can't go out with the best friend squad anymore and do missions like that. So she feels kind of sad. She goes, well, I mean, you know, good job, guys. Like, that's amazing. You guys are coming back soon, right? And then um, Bob and Glimmer's like, well, yeah, we just got to do some wrap-up stuff. Really boring. Nothing too crazy. And then Swift Wind comes in and kind of ruins it. He reveals that, well, Valoran was so happy that they will rescue them from the Horde. They want to throw a party for them. And Glimmer's like, wow, a party? <laughs> that's amazing. Bob and the door's like, Psst, I mean, I a little something nothing too crazy i mean you know we're just gonna eat for like you know five ten minutes and come right back to bright moon liquidly split no 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 problem so while they're walking over to like a really big door that's what they're expecting like a little little feast you know nothing too crazy eat for like five ten minutes and dip but as soon as they walk in it's a gigantic party with confetti and everything like basically the whole town is here like living it up and the queen of Belderon comes up and she goes, well, this was supposed to be just a tiny little get together just to, you know, show our appreciation. But then word got out. Everybody found out. Everybody's like, yo, we got to go to this thing. Yo, you bring the food, you bring this. And then, well, look at it now. It's a huge party. <laughs> I'm really sorry if all of this happening. A few other people run up to Bo and, and I will say Glimmer, Bo and the door. Uh, one person says that they want Bo to show the kids his arrows because they really are inspired by him. And there's like this one little kid with like a little fake, not fake, but he has like a little like arrow, bow and arrow made out of two little twigs. And both like, oh my goodness, that's so amazing. Uh, some other people come up and congratulate them. And then we get me a new character that becomes significant in this episode. Her name is Flutterina. She knows just about everything about Sira and Bo and all her other battles. She's just a mega fangirl. And she's just so excited to meet Sira uh, slash Adore. She's so excited to where as soon as, you know, Adore reaches out her hand to handshake her, like, hey, how you doing? It's nice to meet you. She just, it's fair to pass out. She's like, I'm holding her hand. Oh my goodness. Like, I can't believe I'm holding her hand. <laughs> this is what Flutterina looks like. And like I said, she becomes pretty significant in this episode. So she says that one day, whenever she gets older, she would like to join the rebellion and fight the good fight against the Horde. So after that, um, they walk off, Bo and Adore. They don't walk out the party, but they walk over to another side so they can talk to each other. And Bo and um, Adore are like, well, we have to stay, right? I mean, we'll kind of be rude to leave. We can't stay for too long because we told them we come back pretty quick. But yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll stay for a little bit, maybe a little bit longer than usual. And yeah, let's do this. And then we get a montage of them just chilling at the party. We get one little scene with Bo showing off some card tricks to all the villagers. Everybody's like in awe. It's like this one like emo girl that's not impressed until Bo like grabs a card behind her ear. She's like, what? Yo, what? Let's see, starts freaking out. Um, a door turns into Seera and starts like lifting heavy stuff and helping people hang up posters and they're just in awe of her. And that's a little montage. It was really nice and sweet. And then after the whole montage, we get this nice screen cap of Bo and a door and her Seera form talking about the whole party. And Seera, well, a door, she's really happy about this party because she goes, you know, these these people have actual stories about me. Not the Sira from, you know, like 800 years ago and other legends and tales, but about me. She's really happy about that. And I thought that was really sweet because, yeah, most of the time when people talk about Sira, they think of the old Sira or the legends. They don't really talk about Adore. So I guess that would get to the door a little bit. Not like making her depressed, but, you know, I'm doing Sira stuff too. Like I'm Sira. No one's talking about my accolades and now they are. So she's really impressed about that. She's really nice. Anyway, eventually, I guess I should show off the, the town's lady. Eventually, um, like the queen or the chiefess of this town runs in and she's panicking. Because she said there's a new bot coming towards Balderon. It's really bigger than anything she's ever seen. So Adora says, obviously, oh, they'll handle it. Y'all keep the party going. They'll go out to handle it. Bo, he grabs his bow and arrows because he says he'll come and help too. But then Adora, she's feeling really confident and high and mighty because of all these town people hyping her up. So she goes, her and Swiftwind can handle this. Bo, you stay here and keep the party going. Bo was like, uh, okay, if you say so. He's not really down for the idea, but hey, if you say so, it's whatever. So Bo, not Bo, Adora and uh, Swiftwind fly out to fight a bot. And it looks exactly like the bot we saw in season two, episode one. 
So they fly it down to fight the bot, and they beat it pretty easily. Slice it right in half. But as soon as they do, it regenerates. But it doesn't just regenerate. It regenerates and multiplies. So now there's two of them. Obviously, Bo, Bo obviously, Adore is first one's like, whoa, okay. We got to be careful on how we destroy these things. This is going to might get a little complicated. So they do beat these things pretty easily. They destroy it, but not... Because it only regenerates if you, like, completely demolish it. So a door just stabs it in, like, its specific component and it, like, circ circuits and it falls down. And then they like, throw one against a tree and it doesn't blow up, but it does break. So as long as you don't, like, completely destroy it, it can't regenerate and it can't multiply. So after they beat them, a door goes, well, specifically Swiftwind, he goes, was that too easy? A door's like, where C Ryan Swiftwind? It's easy. Come on, let's go back. As soon as they go back, Everybody's gone. Nobody's partying anymore. The only person that's left is Flutterina. She says that as soon as Sea Run left, they came in and took everybody. Bo was able to fight some people off, and some people were able to escape, but obviously he got overwhelmed. They took everybody away. Obviously, Adora's like, oh, I'm such an idiot. That was a distraction, that bot over there. They saw it. I mean, they waited until I left. They didn't capture Bo. I can't believe I let this happen. Flutterina says that she knows he's just a kid. But she, oh, well, she says she knows she's not, like, obviously an adult. But she's not a kid anymore. And she would really like to help the rebellion and help to get back Bo and everybody else. Adora's like, of course you can come help us. Let's go. So we cut over to Bo waking up inside of a trap. Well, I guess it's like a jail cell. And all the other town people are there, too. He doesn't have a bow or arrows anymore. And some people start uh, spazzing out. Specifically, there's one, like, really buff grill. Because he keeps calling Bo the, Bo the tech master. And she goes, what good is Bo the Tech Masker? Tech Masker. <laughs> Bo the Tech Master. If not his tech, we're doomed. <laughs> she starts freaking out. And Bo goes, hey, I know Swiftwind and Adore. Obviously, they're not going to stop until they come here and save us. But that doesn't mean we can't try to escape ourselves. They did search us and take our weapons away, but they didn't search us well enough. He walks over to a kid and grabs a little piece of entrapped technology behind his ear. So, let's get to it. We cut over to Catra and Scorpia watching everybody in the pit. And Scorpia is just really happy to be with Catra again on patrol, doing some really cool stuff. She kind of spooks Catra a little bit because the weapons they confiscated from Balderon, the giant tanks, well, they retrofitted them to shoot out confetti. <laughs> so, that kind of spooks Catra a little bit when Scorpia presses the button. Anyway, Scorpia is like, so, um, what's the plan? We don't really, you know, because, you know, back in the day when it was me, you, and a Entraptor, you know, when you say Entraptor around Catra, she gets a little annoyed. Uh, you know, the whole thing with Entraptor, we were like best bud if we knew exactly what we are doing. Now, I don't really know the plan, so can you just tell me? And then Catra just goes, the plan is working fine. That's all you need to know. Uh, I mean, yeah, but, you know, you're leaving me in the dark. Just back off. Just leave me alone. And Catra walks off, and Scorpion's just standing there looking kind of sad. We cut back over to Flood Arena and Sira and I don't know why. I, I usually say Adora no matter what until like, but I don't know why it keeps getting mixed up with Adora and Sira. But we cut over to Swiftwind, Flood Arena, and Adora. And they see two guards at the gate. Obviously, they have to take them out swiftly without being seen. But everybody knows who Adora is. And, you know, everybody knows what a giant horse that can talk looks like with wings. So, <laughs> it's not going to be too easy. Flood Arena runs up to access and distraction. Leads two guards over around the corner. Then Swiftwind and Adore take them out easily. Then Adore turns into Sira. It was really funny because we get because this happened once before. It was episode six, I think, five or six of season one, when Adore turned into Sira, and we get the perspective of Bo just seeing like big flashing lights in front of him, and then we cut over to like the you know the sequence where her stabbing not stabbing but you know punching her fist and like getting the gut licks and everything. That was just so funny. We get the exact same thing here. You see, like, the animation transformation. Like, you know, oh, I got the got the cape. I got the hair. Then we go to the Flood Arena. Oh, my goodness. She's turning into Sira. And then we get back over the door, like, trying to get to herself. <laughs> that was just so funny to me. Anyway, they rush in, and they go, what's going on? From the tracker pad that we captured from those two guards we took out, the gate, I mean, not the gate, but the pit that the prisoners should be inside should be right here. But then that. And then a ton of bots show up. So Flood Arena runs over to the side while Adora and Swiftwind take them out. It was a pretty cool way. Oh, no, that's later. My bad. They, so they take them out and completely destroy them. And when that happened, I was like, wait a second. 
didn't they just like these are the exact same bots? They don't look different. Why did Adora and Swift win completely destroy them? Can't these guys regenerate? And then yeah, two seconds later, all of them regenerate. So now there's like five to six robots surrounding them. And I was like, yeah, these things don't look different. And I'm assuming it's been like, I don't know, ten, five, ten minutes since they were at Belder, since they fought the bot. It's been like ten minutes, maybe twenty at the max. So why did they destroy them? And yeah, they literally say right after that, they go, oh, we forget. These guys can regenerate. We're so stupid. I'm like, yeah, that was pretty dumb. These bots look the exact same. And it's been like less than an hour, I would assume. Like at max, maybe 20 minutes, maybe 30 that's pushing it. So I don't know why they completely destroyed them, but they're, they're like, yeah, we're so dumb. I can't believe we let that happen. We got back over to Bo, and he used that little piece of technology that Trampton made. He puts it on the little kid's bow and arrow, shoots it at the, like the wire grid that's keeping them in there, and it circ circuits it. So now they're free. They can get out of here. We cut back over to Sira, and Cather comes out. Cather tries to taunt Adora and everything. Adora goes, Look, I'm done with your mind games and any little games you're trying to play with me. You hurt way too many people when you open up that portal. So I'm done playing around with you. Cather gets a little annoyed and Chrissy brings up a portal. And uh, she goes, you know, you're pretty dumb. You left those people by themselves and got them captured. You can hurt people all by yourself. And you're pretty dumb at not noticing your traps. And the thing that they're standing on, like the grid, activates. So a huge set of electricity happens and it's panning swift wind or door down. They can't move. It's just too much electricity. So after that, we cut back over to Bo. And he finds it really suspicious that there's no guards around them. Blood Arena comes in and sends Bo over to where um, Catra is. Uh, they throw some rocks at Catra, specifically Flood Arena, and gets her distracted. Adora is able to grab Swift Wind's arm. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, my bad. I, okay. Um, Catra tells the bots to shoot at a door, so it locks in on her. Bo activates the cannon that shoots out confetti. And when the confetti starts to go everywhere, it, like, distracts the bots. Because they're specifically locked on a door. But they see all this confetti around them. They're like, wait, where are we aiming? So it confuses them. Then a door is able to grab Swift Wind's leg. They get, like, superpower because they, like, take with bond time. <laughs> and she gets on top of Swift Wind. Swift Wind stops on the ground. And it sends out, like, this huge, like, magical wave that takes out all the bots in an instant. And then Catra, she dips. <laughs> she dips out of there. Real quick, we get this pretty cool screen cap of both of them standing. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, you can see it. Let's go. I knew it would have been a little too bright, but it worked. It worked out. So it sends out this huge magical way that takes out the bot. It's capture she dips. Eventually, all the townspeople go back to Belderon, and obviously Adora thanks them all for helping her out, especially Flutterina. And then she accepts Flutterina's offer to join the rebellion. Then we cut back over to Scorpia and Catra and the Horde. And Scorpia finds her sitting down uh, on, the, on the legs and tries to confront Catra. Not like mad, but she goes, hey, you know, hey, what's going on? You know, you haven't been talking to me lately. And she brings up Entrapta, how they used to like pal it on with her back in the day. All the nice stuff that she used to do, how they're friends and everything. And Catra just snaps at her. She goes, look, stay away from me. We're not friends, okay? I don't care about you, so just back up. And if you ever let Emily come near me again... I'm going to sell her for scrap heap. So back it up. Walks off. Obviously, Scorpio is just like, you know, mortified. She likes Catra. She thought she was a friend. She just said all this mean stuff to her, told her to back up. She was going to, you know, run at friends. Obviously, she's, she's in shock. She doesn't know what to say. Uh, Catra, bro. She's just... <laughs> yeah, she's so annoying, man. All the stuff she's been doing back to back to back. Especially this, too, because Scorpio, she's been really patient with her. Especially after what she did to Ka uh, not Captain Trampta. She's still been patient with her. And this? Man, that sucked. <laughs> that sucked big time. We got back over to Adora and Bo. They're walking back to Bright Moon. Uh, Flood Arena's, like, spazzing because she's finally able to join the Rebellion. And Swift One is just singing. And Tra uh, and Dora was beating herself up because of what happened. Because as soon as she left, everybody got captured. But Bo obviously consoled her, like, "Hey, you were able to rescue everybody. And look, we got a new member of the rebellion. You did good out here. Come on, let's go back home." Then we cut back over to Catra, and it turns out that Flood Arena is double trouble. That was their plan. Now we got a man on the inside. That's pretty bad. After we get that reveal, 
Well, that's the end of the episode. So yeah, that's that's the episode for you guys. So that's pretty good. <laughs> I guess I'll see you guys uh, next week because I can't uh, actually. It was something I was thinking of. I gotta look at the episode list though. Um. Okay, okay. It's it's later than it's later. I was thinking of something, but it's way later than what I was thinking. But anyway, that's the episode for you guys today. I was thinking of something else. Uh. So yeah. Like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you all later. Thank you all for watching. I think you all are being wonderful human beings, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. All right.